What's happening, y'all? Welcome inside the Fantasy Stock Exchange. Danny and Bush coming at you today with Dynasty Decisions episode 76. I guess this is the premiere video of me and the new setup. Had a long weekend of moving, so we took a couple of days off. Uh, but we're back at it, basically breaking down your guys' Dynasty teams. You know what we do around here. We talk about whether you're rebuilding, contending, you know what you should do with your rookie picks, how are your trades grading out to be. We cover all that and more here on Dynasty Decisions. So if you want to be a part of this, uh, type of video. You can check out our Patreon. You can uh, submit your team via email there. If you are a patron, just specify that you are. If you're not, you can join the queue of free submissions up to like 20, 25 teams, 30 teams at this point in time. So uh, without further ado, Danny, how you doing? Doing well, doing well. And yeah, you know, we've been grinding these out. Uh, it seems like it's been mostly to a week, but I mean, at this type of the content season, you guys love watching the Dynasty Decisions. Obviously, Combine starting up this week. So, going to have a lot more information, a lot of the oncoming rookie talent coming in. So, you know, getting that early look right now, giving you guys the breakdowns right now uh, in, you know, the inevitable rookie hype fever after the Combine going into that NFL draft. Yeah, I'm ready to go. I'm fired up. All right. So, let's waste no time. Let's get right into it. All right, so the first team we have here is from AJ, who is a tone setter patron tier here. Uh, Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson as his top two quarterbacks, Jonathan Taylor, Travis Etienne, Najee Harris, James Cook, and some other guys there. Cooper Cup, Devontae Adams, AJ Brown, T. Higgins, DK Metcalf, Amari Cooper, Jahan Dotson, quite deep at wide receiver, TJ Hawkinson, and some other dudes there. No real draft capital the next two drafts, just like fourth and fifth round picks, but he does have all of his picks in 2025. It is a 10-team, six-point per passing touchdown, half PPR, um, one quarterback league, so it's not a super flex league, uh, but he does have some IDP kickers and defenses that we're not really going to worry about over here. He's the back to back champ, um, won the championship this year and the year before. So, what would we do to improve upon this team? I guess when you're in this position, you're just kind of looking for moves that'll keep you competitive as long as humanly possible. Yeah, 100%. And I mean, like looking at this team, it's easy to see why you're a back to back champion. Uh, you go like at least what what is that seven eight deep at wide receiver uh in a league where you can start up to five a week you got your anchor running backs uh tj hawkinson obviously had a very good finish the last year and then i, I mean a quarterback you have two of like the top five or six options in dynasty period uh in a one quarterback league so uh, embarrassment of riches here obviously a very very good team your picks are obviously you don't have a lot but i mean for this type of team if you had picks somehow uh, the league might as well just fold yeah, I mean, when, you, when you're looking at a, a situation like this, the only thing you can really do, because I think you could do nothing with this team and just go into next year and probably try and win again and probably be successful at doing so. But what you want to probably look at is like buy low candidates, sell high candidates on your roster. For me, I mean, Najee Harris has kind of been like a general sell high candidate for us. I think he's relatively appropriately priced in Dynasty, but if people are still kind of holding on to that, you know, RB three price that he was going at last year or whatever in startups, maybe shop Najee Harris around, see if you can re-roll him into a first rounder in this year's class, maybe a next year's class. Cause realistically you don't even really need him on your roster. You could always, uh, always transition him into like a different running back with a little bit more of like an ambiguous situation, potentially too, potentially like a JK Dobbins or something like that. Um, but overall there's not a ton of moves that stand out with this team for no. me. The one that maybe you could look into, because, I mean, it is a one-quarterback league. It is a 10-teamer. Uh, you have Lamar Jackson, who, when healthy, can give you elite production. If somebody's willing to give you, let's just say, hypothetically, you downgraded from Burrow to a guy like maybe Dak, maybe even like Deshaun Lance. Watson or somebody like that, Lance, somebody like that, and you can uh, move maybe Hawkinson in the deal and get a really, really good wide receiver back, uh, I mean— you have Hawkinson as your only tight end, but just rapid fire, uh, Amari Cooper and Joe Burrow. And you can go for from that to like Dak and I don't know. Can that get you Dak and Drake London? And a one quarter. Yeah, maybe there's, I mean, there's like incremental moves that you could definitely make with this. Like maybe Joe Burrow and TJ Hawkinson gets you up to like George Kittle and Dak Prescott or something like yeah. that. And you get a little bit better at tight end little bit of a downgrade at quarterback, but you're all right there because you already have Lamar Jackson. So just, I mean, just little moves is probably all I'd be looking to do with this team. Realistically, yeah. you could do nothing and it would be fine. Yeah. I would say like 
you have a lot of buy low candidates on your team too. So it's not like I'm even looking to sell high on really any of your high end pieces because Jonathan Taylor to me, I think is a buy low candidate. I think ETN is probably appropriately priced. Cooper cup, probably a buy low candidate from like a production standpoint. Yep. Same with Devonte Adams, AJ Brown, T Higgins, DK Metcalf. Like none of these guys outside of maybe Amari Cooper, cause he's coming off of a great season. Um, would really be guys that I'd be looking to shop and move off of. So I would say that you could probably do nothing with this team, but maybe shop around and see what the value is of some of your players, Amari Cooper yeah. and Najee Harris, and maybe one of your quarterbacks to be specific and also TJ Hawkinson potentially as well. Yeah, no, I would agree with that as well. Uh, you're clearly in a really good position. You're already back to back champ. I wouldn't be shocked if you were the favor to go uh, three, three piece, to be honest. Yeah, exactly. So we can move on to the next team here from Claire. It is a super flex start 10 league. Um, it He has Josh Allen, Matt Ryan, and Mike White. So pretty weak at the quarterback position outside of Josh Allen there. Saquon Barkley, Kenneth Walker, Ramondre Stevenson, Antonio Gibson, Jamal Williams, a couple other guys there at running back. T Higgins, Mike Evans, Jacoby Myers, Darnell Mooney, and some other dudes there at wide receiver. And then uh, Dallas Goddard, David Njoku, Kate Otten at tight end. And then he also has the 101 in this year's class, the 107, the 201 the 207, 305, and 307. And then he has all of his own picks in the future classes, except for one of his 2025 thirds or his 2025 third. He has some trades listed here as well, but what are your thoughts on the roster? I mean, clearly he he needs a quarterback too, uh, and probably three as well. Yeah, I mean, and, and looking at the deals, obviously the, the the one deal, DJ Warren a third, you got the 101, the third, and uh, the Jacoby Myers. Like, yeah, you, you smash out of the park. I will say, though, in your spot, because you have Josh Allen and not much else at quarterback, I don't think I would have done this this Dak Prescott trade since Dak Prescott for T. Higgins in 201. And again, on face value, it's probably a fair trade, but given the quarterback market, given how hard it is to get you know top 10, top 12 level options like Dak Prescott represents, I personally need overpays when I'm tra- transitioning that level of quarterback equity. Yeah, I think... Like your roster's in good shape. And uh, yeah. I mean, you might be a little heavy on like the running back running assets, back. but overall, I think your roster's in pretty decent shape. So I probably would have stuck with the Dak Prescott side. I think the way that I would address your quarterback position now is luckily you have the 101. Now, I'm not going to draft a quarterback at 101. You no. want to draft Bijan Robinson no matter what there, or potentially move down just one pick, like 101 right down to 102. Get yourself Bryce Young, and away we go. What I would personally do is try and buy low on an elite quarterback with 101. See how high your league is on Bijan Robinson, because if you can get, you know, there's leagues that you can get Deshaun Watson in a two for the 101, or Kyler Murray in a two, or something like that, and uh, you could even just swap him maybe straight up for somebody a little even better, like Justin Herbert or Trevor Lawrence, potentially. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's listed here. uh, Should I go for a Kirk Cousins type or use my one-on-one to try for Mahomes or Burrow package? If you can get, you know, Mahomes or Burrow uh, in the type of deal, like let's just say hypothetically right here, given the package you got, maybe it costs you 107 or 101, 107, and maybe a future first. You have your, uh, your 2024 or 2025. If you package one of those and, somebody's willing to sell Patrick Mahomes. Like that's not enough to be honest, but if you can get him for that type of price, like, yeah, you got the framework. You still have Barkley Walker, Stevenson Gibson. So you're set at running back. Maybe you transition one of those running backs into an added wide receiver for depth, but you get a second like elite franchise type of quarterback. If they're available on the market, like, you can easily compete with this team. The the one glaring hole would be quarterback two, but if you address that, and one one's a very, very good start in terms of being able to address that, yeah, I can see you absolutely competing this year. Yeah, I mean, you're a little light on wide receiver depth, I would say, as well. Jacoby yep. Myers will probably make a decent bag in free agency, so he should be okay there as, like, your wide receiver three. One other move that if, like, let's say quarterbacks are not on the table, people are just going to let you spend the one on uh, 101 on Bijan Robinson or maybe try and trade down to to grab like Bryce Young and get like a piece on top of it or whatever. I might take like a guy like Ramondre Stevenson, for example, because yes. you have so much running back depth and he's like a risky running back to hold right now because he doesn't have high draft capital. Take Ramondre Stevenson, take your 201 and go after, like you said, a Kirk Cousins type. And maybe you can get like Brandon Ayuk on top of that. So you get yourself transition from Ramondre to like Brandon Ayuk or to DJ Moore, Debo Samuel, somebody maybe around that kind of territory and then, or Michael Pittman jr. And then you get Kirk cousins. Who's going to be a solid quarterback too, for you on top of that. Yeah, no, for sure. Or uh, the, the other one, if, if you're looking for, for some upside to get a young option, like 
This is the type of team, honestly, because uh, you have youth, maybe you, at that point, if you do make a move like this, you transition a guy like Barkley and Evans, but um, maybe even Trey Lance is affordable. Somebody's just fed up with him. They're not happy. They're not sure exactly what's going to go on with San Francisco, which, by the way, not many people are, are talking enough about the fact that Brock Purdy's probably not even going to be ready for the start of the year. So for the most part, if you buy Trey Lance now when people aren't really baking that in, even if you are not fully bought in, you'll have a chance to flip him once he's the starting quarterback entering week one this year. So um, if a guy like Ramondre Stevenson, plus a little bit, you mentioned like the 201 or the 207 can get you up to like a Trey Lance, I'm all for making that type of move as well. Would you send his 107 straight up for Trey Lance right now? Heartbeat. I, I personally, that's about where I value Trey Lance Heartbeat. because to me, I would I would probably say that Anthony Richardson and Trey Lance are going to be close for me yep. in terms of like my overall dynasty rankings. If you can get Anthony Richardson at that point in time, at that 107 pick, then I would say you also could just hold that pick after you add a Kirk Cousins type cool. and then get yourself a young up upside quarterback and Anthony Richardson during the rookie draft as well. Um, that also could be an option. But I would say, you know, practical moves to make are probably try and transition off of one of your running backs, whether it's Barkley, Walker, or Stevenson. We pretty much only talked about Stevenson, but you could also yeah. see what those other guys can net you in a trade as well. Try and either transition them into quarterback equity, most likely, or potentially another great wide receiver and see how you can use the one-on-one to go after quarterback equity as well. Yeah, well, Claire actually listed here that if AR-15 uh, does get re uh, decent draft capital, he probably won't won't make it to her 107. So, Which he is um, like probably very likely to get decent draft top capital, 10 capital at this point in time. Uh, also mentioned she doesn't want Levis. So, uh, like, yeah, if you don't want Levis at the 107 and you can transition that potentially to, like, Trey Lance, like, yeah, that would be the move then if AR obviously isn't available. So... Yeah, I also don't hate like just going for the p production package. Maybe at 107, uh, the guy, you know, loves, I don't know, JSNs on the board or something like that. And you can transition the 107, which just becomes JSN, into like Kirk Cousins plus Brandon Ayuk or something like that. You get like a wide receiver and oh, Kirk Cousins out awesome. of it. Like something like that might be actually possible if somebody's really like we're talking rookie fever season, right? People are yeah. going to be really high on this prospect uh, prospect class. Uh, real quick, he actually, uh, I just want to document the trade that he did to get the one-on-one. He sent away DJ Moore to third, yeah. got a random 2023 first at the time, which became the one-on-one, a third, and Jacoby Myers. Overall, though, again, not too many moves you have to make, but um, like you're in a good position, realistically. Just transition one of those running backs, uh, use the one-on-one, try to leverage for an elite quarterback, or like Corey said, uh, if you can't, then uh, there's other moves they could potentially make. But overall, yeah, I, I do think that you are in a, very good spot to turn this around really quickly and potentially can't compete for 2023. But uh, we can move on to the next team. That's going to be from Hippo. Uh, it does say listed here. He finished three and 11 and dead last last year and second to last the year before started up in 2020 does mention he didn't know what he was doing. So uh, overall here, Derek Carr, Sam Howell, Matt Corral at quarterback, Najee Harris, Khalil Herbert, Ken Gainwell, Jerome Ford, running back more. Ayuk, Pickens, Watson, et cetera. They're a wide receiver. Fant, McBride, Bellinger, and Jelani Woods at tight end. Along with this year, his 105, 309, 310, 403, 408, 504. Next year is without his 2024 first, uh, but he does have a projected early second and a late second, 3, 4, and 5, and then all of his picks in 2025. So it also has a couple li uh, list of trades here, but overall, what are your thoughts on this team? Yeah, this is a one quarterback league by the sounds of it because he said he doesn't know what to do with his 105. He thinks Bijan, Gibbs, JSN, and QJ are going to go, which tells me that yep. this is a one quarterback league, really? even though he didn't list that. Um, he also says be brutally honest with this team as well. Um, I would say that you're in a pretty rough sp uh, spot here because you have, you know, no studs on this roster, realistically, right? You don't have, like, who's the best player on this roster? Brandon Ayuk? maybe Christian Watson, like there's no real studs on this roster right now. So I'm probably going to absolutely rip this thing to the ground. If I was in your position, I'm trying to collect future capital because you're going to be stuck in limbo for a long time. And the fact that you finished dead last this year and didn't get the one on one is going to, you know, set you yeah. back as well. Um, it's same. Second loss I mean, last you said year second to last two years ago. I don't even know where that pick would have went. It looks like you didn't spend it on anybody. Um, otherwise you'd have like Drake London or Garrett Wilson on this roster unless you sold them. So, I mean, for me, I'm looking to just tear this thing down to the studs. I think that you're in a, a really, really poor situation if I'm being honest here. So, uh, for me, Najee Harris, DJ Moore, Brandon, Ayuk, George Pickens, Chris, like they're young receivers for sure. But if I could transition them and just re-roll them into random picks in 2024 and 2025, that's a hundred percent what I'm looking to do. Uh, if you want me to be brutally honest, like you said at the bottom, 
I am not spending a single pick until 2025 and every single person on this roster is on the block. Like I know I'm not even just saying like that as hyperbolic, like DJ Moore, Brandon, Ayuk, George Pickens, Christian Watts, anybody that can help you win is on the block. If you can somehow convince the person that has your 2024 one, maybe you have to give five, six players to do it. You do that trade. You have to get future capital on this team. Um, it's just not, it's, it's simply not in a position to be able to compete. And I get it, it is a 14 team league. So the rosters aren't going to be quite as strong, but you probably have what in a one quarterback league, five players that go in the first 10 rounds, eight rounds, nine rounds, like yeah. Najee Harris, DJ Moore, Brandon, Ayuk, George Pickens, Christian Watson. Outside of that, Nobody else on the team is going within the first 10 rounds of the startup. So, um, yeah, it's just a, it's a tough spot to be in. But, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, it's going to grow some character. You're going to be able to strip this thing down to the core. And uh, it's going to be nice looking at your pick arsenal uh, once you don't make any in 2023 and 2024. Because all those picks you have, all those players you have should not be spent on players. Because point blank simple, I, if I can score zero a week, I would here in this situation. Yeah, so I would say you're definitely going to want to go after your 2024 first. Like Danny said, if you yep. even if it costs you Najee Harris, Khalil Herbert, Brandon Ayuk, and Christian Watson to get your own first and maybe like picks in 2025 as yeah. well or something like that, then I'm totally okay doing that. Strip this thing of all the production because this is going to be a long one. And uh, real quick, we can just talk about the trades and then we'll probably move on to the next team because there's a lot of work that uh, yeah. Hippo has left to do here. Uh, Derek Henry, Michael Gallup in a mid-2024 second, he traded away in exchange for Khalil Herbert in the 105. Now, that's one quarterback, move. 105, but still, I think yeah. that's probably relatively solid value that you got there. Yeah, I like that move a lot. Um, I'm assuming, like, because you had guys like Henry, Dylan, uh, Gallup, Davis before, maybe, like, when you initially bought those guys, you probably overpaid. So now you, you're you obviously rectifying it. You're trying to get the capital back. That's a really good start. I mean, getting, you know, a guy that should increase in value during the offseason with Khalil Herbert, potentially even more if they don't add a running back, maybe your best bet would to be to resell him prior to the NFL draft would be your ways to go. And then the 105, I mean, yeah, like like we said, I'm not even trying to use that 105. I'm trying to no. see maybe you can use that maybe in a package to get your 2024 first back. That would be a potential move. Um, yeah, I, I think this is a great move. Next deal, Gabe Davis and the 204 for Mechie and the 202. I think you sold a little bit low here. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I like the pick upgrade, but I just think in terms of relative startup value, relative market value, you probably could have gotten at least Mechie in a late two uh, for Gabe Davis in its own right in a one quarterback league. Yeah, I would say there's a pretty big difference between Davis and Mechie as, as fed up with some, you know, yeah. as some people are with Gabe Davis. I think you probably sold a little bit low there. And then uh, AJ Dillon in the 202 after the Eric Aaron Jones extension slash restructure, like I'm assuming. Christian Watson and the 408 was what your return was. I'd say that's probably a solid move. You transition yeah. to a young receiver instead of, you know, a volatile running back in the 202 and a one quarterback league is not going to be a super, super high value pick. So, I mean, yeah. overall, you're making okay moves here, but you're going to need to probably swing bigger on yeah. some of these. Give a contender two pieces for their their first and second next year or for their first and second. Hell, aim for 2025, like Danny said. People yeah. will give you their 2025 first and second without hesitation because they have no idea what players that's going to end up being, if they're even still going to be in the league at that point in time, and um, if their team is going to be ready to compete at that point in time. So they might be like, hey, I'll give you my first and second for Brandon Ayuk and George Pickens. I'm trying to win right now. And for you, you're just trying to build an arsenal, a war chest of draft capital to be able to rebuild this thing in the long term because you are very much in a bad spot right now. Yes, no, I fully agree. Uh, we kept it brutally honest. And hopefully, you know, the next time you submit, we do see those moves on the way. But overall, I mean, sometimes making mistakes and being able to rectify them are the most enjoyable part of Dynasty because we've made some bad moves and we've been able to turn them around because at the end of the day here, you just got to trust your own process and you got to be willing to accept when you make mistakes. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I traded like Josh Allen for Christian McCaffrey in my first ever, like in one of my first ever Dynasty leagues. So that was really, really bad. Josh Allen at the time was not thought of to be a highly sought after asset. It was like Josh Allen, Joe Mixon and like two twos for Christian McCaffrey or something like that. Yeah. It was brutal. Anyways, it we happens. all learn from those. 100%. It's okay to not know what you're doing. That's why you're around here. Uh, we were brutally honest with you, and hopefully you'll feel more secure going into uh, future Dynasty drafts and into this one. And speaking of being more secure, we want to announce a proud new sponsor of ours, Aura, and you guys will be hearing about them right now. All right, fellas, I am proud to introduce our new sponsor, Aura. Aura is an easy-to-use app 
that includes everything families need to protect their identities, to protect their money, to protect their passwords, their devices, and more. Anybody can find anything on the internet nowadays, including your full legal name, your personal email, your home address, your phone number, and even some information about your relatives. I know if I Google my name, Along with all the fantasy football stuff comes uh, stuff with my parents, where people work, even stuff relating to my late grandfather. It feels like an invasion of privacy, if I'm being honest. And this information is accessible to you know the public because of data brokers who profit from selling your information to robocallers, telemarketers, spammers, anybody else that wants to learn more about you. I'm sure you guys have gotten spam text before. Same kind of idea. What Aura does is they identify these data brokers. They opt out of these junk mail and telemarketing lists on your behalf. And you can use my link Aura.com slash fantasy stock exchange for two weeks to see how many data brokers are sharing your information. Aura's app also features a VPN, a password manager, real-time credit and identity theft monitoring, including 24-hour US-based call centers if you have any issues, internet parental controls, and it protects your devices from malware. Aura is basically every internet Internet safety tool that you'll ever need all inside one app. It's really easy to set up and everything that you're ever going to need to stay safe on the internet. You don't need to download seven apps to get a, a VPN, to get parental controls, antivirus protection. It is all located for one price. So go to aura.com slash fantasy stock exchange to start your free two week trial. Also link down below in the description, or you can scan the QR code and we're back to the video. All right, big shout out to Aura. Like I said, brand new sponsor of ours. Check out the link in the description. Uh, check out the QR code in the uh, in the read that you guys would have seen there. But let's move on to the next team here, which is from Josh Stump. Uh, 12 team, super flex PPR, no tight end premium, six point per passing touchdown league. Trevor Lawrence, Deshaun Watson is the top two guys uh, at quarterback there. Running back, Kenneth Walker, Travis Etienne, J.K. Dobbins, Khalil Herbert. CeeDee Lamb, uh, Brandon Ayuk, Jamison Williams, George Pickens, DPJ, and others at wide receiver. TJ Hawkinson, Tyler Higby, and some others at tight end. And then uh, 107, 201, 301, 306, 307, et cetera, uh, as far as draft picks, does not have his one or his two, but has all of his other picks, basically. So he said he went win now after trading for Kenneth Walker to solidify his running back room for the next couple of seasons. Uh, he said he's content taking best wide receiver or quarterback available at the 107, whether that's, you know, Anthony Richardson falling, whether that's, you know, JSN or Jordan Addison, whoever it ends up being. He said he's still talking with the team that has both the 104 and 105. He said, should I try and get one of those picks or possibly both to get my preferred rookies? Or should I just stay put and let the draft play out? And then he said the same team has Drake London, who I've been trying to trade for since September, but to no avail. So obviously that guy's a little higher on Drake London than the market is. I mean, you're probably where we're at on Drake London, and it sounds like he might be as well. So um, what are your thoughts on this team? And uh, what are your thoughts on what his like about his questions and what his next steps are? Yeah, I think his assessment on his own team is uh, pretty much up to par. I mean, this team has the foundation to be able to compete. You have, you know, two difference-making quarterbacks, a couple nice running backs at the top, especially if they stay healthy, a wide receiver, uh, lacking a little bit of depth, but at least you have, uh, you know, some star talent there with CeeDee Lamb. And then TJ Hawkinson, obviously a productive player that's valued, you know, in the top six or so in the market. So I do think this team can compete. You kind of mentioned here, best quarterback or wide receiver available at the 107. I would also agree with that. Um, I think it's probably more likely after the draft, given what we expect with this quarterback capital, that you're probably going to have to take a wide receiver at that spot, which, you know, with this team, you had a fifth wide receiver. I think you should be in a fine spot. You mentioned potentially trying playing out. Honestly, at this point, especially it's way too early to be able to kind of assess what exactly is going to happen in front of you. So I would stay put for now in terms of being able to move. But I mean, if you're in the draft and you know the, uh, you know, the landing spots, the uh, draft capital, everything. And at that point, you do view a tier break from 105 to the 107. You want to move up then? Sure. But right now, uh, I, I'm content getting, you know, one of one of the top receivers, uh, especially or if somehow the quarterbacks fall, you know, and Anthony Rich, or Will Levis would be more than fine at that 107. Yeah. And if you're not high on Will Levis, you could also sell that pick straight up for a wide receiver, too. Yeah. Right. If if. I mean, you, you're in a spot where you don't absolutely need a third quarterback. You probably should have one, but you could always buy low on one midseason or something like that. If you're on the board at 107 and you're not in love with Will Levis, like I'm not in love with Will Levis, and you could sell Will Levis essentially straight up for like Debo Samuel to help bolster your wide receiver core in your competitive window, I don't think that's a terrible move to make either. Going after does have you. like, you know, mid-teens, early 20s caliber wide receivers in terms of dynasty startup value. Even one of the like true win now competitive guys like Stephon Diggs, Tyreek Hill, Cooper Cup, Devontae Adams, somebody like that. If if 
rookie fever takes over your your fantasy league, there's a chance that people will let those you know very productive veterans go for the chance to draft JSN or the chance to draft yeah. Jordan Addison. The other move I would say that that does stick out to me, uh, given our relative uh, feel on him relative to the market, um, see what your league is valuing George Pickens as. Because I know in some leagues, George Pickens might be able to net you the 104 and the 105 straight up. Like, it might be able to net you one of those picks. And at that point, you can pretty much secure your favorite wide receiver and potentially your favorite uh, quarterback. Maybe even you can move George Pickens in the 107 to get the 104 and 105 from that guy. Like that's a realistic move in some of these leagues that are super high on George Pickens. That's what I would look towards. Uh, another one Even would if be you had to throw in the two hundred one to that trade. I would probably still yeah, do it. Hundred percent. Another one would be Jamison Williams, currently valued, I believe, as like wide receiver eighteen in dynasty. You want to transition that into a more productive piece. Maybe it costs you, you know, uh, Jamison Williams and you know, a, a couple picks or whatever, and you can get a more win now type of option. Maybe somebody's low on Cooper Cup. Uh, Stefan Diggs, like you could probably mentioned. get Pittman or Judy straight up for Jamison Williams that, in most that works too. Might even get a plus on top of those guys given the market value. Yeah, exactly. And those guys probably, given that your your running back core is in a state of like a win now, which usually anytime you have productive running backs on your team, you're in a state of win now in our opinion. So the fact that you have Walker, Etn, J.K. Dobbins, and Khalil Herbert and these guys, I'd probably be trying to align myself more that like now is my winning window. So as much as a rookie wide receiver that you love will help your team in the long term. It might actually be more beneficial for you to get some productive wide, uh, yep. productive wide receivers and take Jamison Williams, George Pickens, some more value accumulating guys, and maybe ship them off for production guys like we kind of mentioned Pittman, yep. Adams, um, you know Judy, whatever Godwin, whoever you can kind of go after on the cheap. Yep. I think would also make a ton of sense for this team. So I mean, overall, you're in a great spot. I think you know keep you know poking around the trade market, seeing what Drake London can get you, 104, 105, all that stuff. Um, but we can probably move on to the next team here, which is from. Uh, Kaiser or Kaiser. Uh, Kaiser. He said he submitted a question on one of our live streams and we su uh, suggested we send in a request for dynasty decisions. He said um, he basically is hailing from Scotland, which is interesting. So definitely uh, hail to you over in Scotland. We love the international listeners around here. Amen. Basically he uh, made a lot of rookie mistakes in the dynasty league, but he would love to hear our thoughts on salvaging things and uh, where he's at. So it's a 14 team super flex tight end premium six point per passing touchdowns. One and a half point PPR. So we're talking extreme value to the quarterback position. So not yeah. a good start looking at your team, knowing that you have Ryan Tannehill and Sam Darnold and Tyler Huntley, knowing how valuable quarterbacks are in this format. Miles Sanders, David Montgomery, CEH. Uh, but you do have Jefferson Chase and Kyle Pitts to help kind of anchor this team. But the tough thing, like we said, you're, you're so behind the eight ball at quarterback in this type of league format that uh, this thing's going to definitely need some reconstructing. So, um, 203, 204, no other picks in 2023 does have three ones in 2024. Hopefully one of those earmarked for a high first, because you're going to need some quarterback equity. And we got two good ones in that draft. And, uh, then also he has a 2025 first. That's not his own. So he said he traded up to get the extra first round startup pick, assuming that he'd be able to get an elite quarterback and an elite wide receiver. He took Justin Jefferson at 108, expecting fields or Watson to be there at 111, but he was left with Jamar chase falling at value. So in your spot, as great as Jamar Chase is, I would have traded out of that pick. 100% would have traded out. And you you basically, you know, read my thoughts here. I love Jamar Chase. And obviously, it looks fantastic when you have Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson on the same team. Like, that is, like, one of, like, the dreams to be able to think of. Like, yo, like, I have those guys on my team. But that's when you already have the framework. That's when you have the quarterbacks. That's when you're ready to compete. You have those two clear, clear-cut top two wide receivers in Dynasty. Taking them both in a startup, I mean, me and Corey were looking at this, uh, we were looking at the doc before we started, and we are basically talking about this, but it's so tough to get both those guys in a startup and not be left completely behind the eight ball quarterback. And as you see here, I mean, in a 14-team league, it's tough missing out on that quarterback equity. And your spot there, Jamar Chase, if you could have traded down, you know, Jamar Chase would have netted you maybe the 102, uh, a future first maybe, and maybe another piece uh, to move down and still get like a guy like Bryce Young. I think that's what the move I would have looked to do in the startup. Or, I mean, move down a couple picks and get a guy like Dak Prescott or Kyler Murray. So um, it's tough though. You do have those two elite assets and they still are going to hold market value. So you still have time to salvage potentially the quarterback position if you can make a package happen. But um, taking them in the startup and then you know seeing at your next pick, 
the next three quarterbacks, Dak Prescott, Kyler Murray, Tua Tonga below. And now you're staring down the eight ball and you're like, fuck, like, who do I take now? Do I take the, the 104? Do I take, you know, Daniel Jones? Like you're left in a spot where you're basically saying, I, I don't want to reach on a quarterback, but if I don't take a quarterback, I'm going to be left, you know, uh, to, to rot, to be honest. So, yeah, this is a real, this is a really brutal situation that you're in because as good as J, uh, Chase Jefferson and Pitts are, because they're probably the three or three of the best for sure. If not the yes. three best non quarterback assets in a super flex league, people are not going to be willing to give up a, a super ton amount to acquire them in trades because they're not quarterbacks. Right. And this is a 14 team super flex, which means people know that early first round picks next year are going to equal Caleb Williams or Drake may, who are going to have a ton of value in yeah. the start of draft. So, you're really in a bad spot here, unfortunately. Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase, ideally you sell one of these guys, but I mean, given this offer, he said, I've been offered a potential trade here. Ch uh, Jamar Chase and a 2025 first. Again, it's not his own, but it is a future first that he has. And then for Dak Prescott, a 2024 first and second. Again, not a horrible trade, but I think I need more than that for Jamar uh, Chase, especially knowing that Prescott is 30 years old and you're not in a winning window. Well, and that basically, that framework I can work with though. If you can shave that 2025 first off and control your own pick there, and maybe Prescott, you mentioned it's probably going to be an early-ish pick. I'm assuming early is probably like top five, give or take, when I hear early-ish yeah. in a 14-teamer. So if you can shave that first off and maybe he wants, you know, Sanders and Montgomery, if he wants that instead of the first, and you keep your first equity and you can tank your own pick, and basically you can control your own destiny at that point, I'd be more willing at that point. It is like not his said, first in 2025 for what it's, it's worth. It's not his first. Okay, no. fair. Um, I would still want to keep that pick regardless, though, because right. at this point, um, it's a 14-teamer. You need to keep your equity. That's how I personally view it. And then at that point, if you want to say, hey, listen, I have Prescott now, but like Corey kind of said, he's older. I don't necessarily know when I'm going to compete. I want to transition my piece. At that point, we do see in the startup, that Dak Prescott went at the 114 and the 202, or sorry, the 102 went at the 205. Maybe you can get the 102 plus a little piece to transition off of Dak, get Bryce Young. You know he's going to be a 22-year-old quarterback with some, you know, potential accrual of value. And then at that point, you have a young quarterback to build around. You still have one of your stud wide receivers, Kyle Pitts, the gold standard in a tight end premium. And then you could keep stockpiling Pitts because realistically, those are your foundational players. And especially in a 14-teamer, you need those foundational players. And you can craft everything around them in future drafts is how I would say it. Yeah, I would say if I had to adjust the deal that you have on the table right now, I would shave the 2025 first off. I would shave the second that he's giving you. And it's Prescott and a first for Chase. And maybe, like Danny said, you have to throw in Miles Sanders, Montgomery, whatever, just to get it done. And then you can go, like, let's say Chase and Miles Sanders gets it done for Prescott and a 2024 first. Like that, I would make that move. And then, like you said, probably not intend to hold Dak Prescott. Maybe go for a younger quarterback if you can trade away Dak Prescott for, you know, uh, and a third or something for Kyler Murray or something. I don't know exactly what you'd have to do to make it work, but I would probably be just trying my darndest to get a better quarterback oh. situation than what you have now. Dak actually went above Kyler in the startup. So I'm kind of looking like what exactly their league market would be. I'm just kind of basing it off of what I see in the startup. So, uh, I mean, like if you can get, you know, Kyler straight up for Dak, obviously that's better. You know, you get a 25 year old quarterback versus a 30 year old quarterback one with, you know, 25 point potential given his rushing upside versus one that's probably going to be in that mid quarterback one type of area. So that would be a great transition, but obviously, you know, so let's say Caleb said, you know what? Like, I don't know why Dak went earlier. I wanted Kyler all along. Like I value him higher. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, and then like we kind of said, you know, you like Stroud or you like young, whatever, and you can make that move down. Just try to get more youth, still have that elite quarterback asset and still be able to trap craft this team to, you know, I, I wouldn't say you're ready to compete for 2024, but maybe, you know, once you spend those 2023 picks, you have those four or three 2024 first, you use them next year. By 2025, uh, you're going to be able to, you know, have everything seasoned out for you. Yeah, so definitely shop your elite assets, see what you can get for them. Ideally, you need three plus firsts of value for either of those guys, Jefferson, Chase, yes. Pitts, whatever it is. Tight end premium, 14 team or Pitts is worth three firsts in my opinion as well. Yes. So you got to, you really got to, shop these to the right people. If somebody's willing to give you, you know, they're a contender and they're going to give you a late first and a late uh, 2024 and 2025, it's probably not enough for those guys. You're going to need more than that. And ideally you get some quarterback equity out of those elite high end startup picks because 
you know, go to the guys that picked ahead of you that maybe they were caught between Jefferson and Justin Fields. They're caught between Jefferson and Trevor Lawrence in the startup. And all that would, it would take is, is you giving them your 2024 second to go from Jefferson to Trevor Lawrence or something like that. You have no idea at that point in time. So I would definitely try and maneuver and get yourself at least one elite quarterback switching off of one of your elite assets already. So um, we can move on to the next team here, which is from Jack as well here, 12 team, one quarterback league. Uh, Deshaun Watson as his main guy running backs, pretty bare bones with Jarek McKinnon as his top guy there. Garrett Wilson, Jerry Judy, Wandale, and some other dudes at wide receiver. Kyle Pitts is his main tight end there. He also has defenses and kickers, but we're not going to worry about that. Um, 2023, he has the 101, the 107, the 201, 208, 212, 301, 308, et cetera. And then he has an extra one and an extra three in 2024. So he obviously says, I mean, he evaluating his team, he needs a running back or needs to add multiple running backs most likely to compete with this team, but he does have the 101. It's a one quarterback league. So we got to remember how valuable that pick is exactly in a one quarterback league. We're talking a top three overall startup pick. The second B. John Robinson is in the NFL. He thinks he basically is asking, is this like house money? Can I compete next year if things break right? I would say that's probably a fair evaluation. He said, I think I need to trade up with that 107 to get Gibbs thoughts. I would say that is a big time mistake. I I know you're looking at your team and you're going, okay, what do I need to compete? I need running backs. Bijan is not enough. I have to go get another one. I would say that at 107, you're probably still going to have a, a good chance at like whoever RB three is. If it's Zach Charbonnet, whoever it ends up being and B that mindset of like, I have to go get Gibbs is exactly how people make mistakes in drafting for need. Yeah, exactly. Not to mention, I mean, you're, you're mentioning you need running backs, but outside of your top tier receivers, you absolutely need wide receivers as well. So uh, having that mindset that I need Gibbs because he's the clear RB too. Like, no, like you need to play the value spot. And if if at 107, you realize there's a tier break at both running back and wide receiver, you want to move up, then you make that informed decision. But saying, you know, that's the one player I need is going to get you hosed in terms of trade negotiations because people are going to know that and people are going to leverage that. So I would say personally, I would only be willing to add one running back at that spot, especially in the first round, because I do think you do need some wide receivers to be able to compete. That 107, you know, maybe you get your best wide receiver there or maybe you use it as potential fuel to make a trade. You trade for, maybe you get 107, you send off and somebody's willing to send you, you know, Brendan Ayuk in a, a second, hypothetically. Somebody's super high on the 107, they really want, you know, Uh, one of the running backs or one of the wide receivers that they think are going to fall willing to make that move. That's the type of trade I'm looking to make. Cause overall I do think that, yeah, I would want to compete by 2024, but I still think you got a ways to work in terms of your flexible positions. Obviously you're set a quarterback to Sean Watson, set it and forget it. You're fine there. Obviously you're set a tight end, Cal Pitts, gold standard, set it and forget it. You're there. But I do think that while you're focused on the running back, the wide receivers do need some polishing. Yeah, especially if you like you said, you can send the 107. If it's rookie peak hype rookie season, you can maybe get Devontae Smith straight up for that pick. You could maybe get Chris Olave straight up for that pick. You can maybe get Drake London. I know you already have Pitts, but I mean, some people go really out of the wazoo to go get Quentin Johnston or whoever's on the board there at 107 for you. So yeah. 107. Hopefully you can get a great wide receiver talent to fall to you, one of those top three guys. 201, 208. 212, 301, like that's going to be peak running back season anyway, just given the strength of this class. Yep. So if you can add, let's say a tank Bigsby at 201 and then, uh, you know, Tajay Spears at 208 and then you grab, you know, a late round dart throw on Israel Abana at 212. Like you can just throw darts at the board at the running back position, play with house money this year. In 2024, you got two more first round picks. You got two more third round picks. You have an, uh, a second rounder as well. And hopefully by then your team starts to develop because you have a very young team. There's not many yep. players on this team over the age of like 25 outside of Deshaun Watson pretty much. And he's a quarterback. So yeah. um, for you, you're pretty much just going to compete house money. Let Bijan Robinson and the rest of your rookies develop in their first year. And then in 2024, once you add those rookie picks to this team, maybe leverage uh, some guys in season, maybe Zay Jones is having another great year. Maybe Wandale came back from injury and he's playing well. Maybe, you know, um, Jamichael hasty uh, has like six weeks where Travis Etienne was on IR or something like that. There's, there's a number of different directions that you can take during the season as well to help recoup some more draft capital and help build this thing out for the long term. So I would say avoid the tantalizing reality of, of making this thing a competitive team by just adding Jameer Gibbs and doing whatever it takes to get Jameer Gibbs, play the long game, play it out, let it develop over time and you will be in a much better situation long term. Yep. No, fully agree. Uh, overall, again, you're in a, a solid spot, but uh, a couple uh, a couple moves to make. He, he does quickly mention, too, I have a handful of tight ends. Should I try to hoard some more or flip these guys for value? If somebody's willing to you know, buy up and give you, 
I mean, it's a one quarterback league. Maybe somebody's willing to give you a mid two for one of those guys not named Kyle Pitts. Like I, I sell that in a heartbeat. Like if somebody says, here, listen, I'll give you the 204, 205 or whatever for Chickaconquo or Daniel Bellinger. Maybe they saw, you know, some great flashes. You can make that type of move. But overall, I'm not I'm not hurrying a type of move like that. I'm just kind of seeing what happens, uh, you know, during the rookie draft specifically. Oh, I'd be taking late twos and future twos all day. Even yeah, if they're I would do, even if yeah. somebody's a contender, they're gonna give me a, a late 2024 20, two. I would take that for any of those tight ends. So yeah. um Agreed. we could probably move on to the next team here, though. We'll try yep. and speed these last two up here. Jake Brown, um, 12 team super flex, non-tight end premium. Mahomes is main quarterback, Daniel Jones, Stafford, and Howell there behind him. Hall, Stevenson, Brian Robinson, Khalil Herbert. I feel like Khalil Herbert's been on every single team we've talked about so far. <laughs> uh DK Metcalf, Jerry Judy, Gabe Davis, Sky Moore, and some other guys at wide receiver there. Cole Komet as his main tight end there, 109, 203, 209, 409, et cetera, at uh, picks. And then he has all of his future picks as well. So he said he somehow finished in fourth place despite uh, kind of like a middling roster here. Looking to add better players, specifically more wide receivers and quarterbacks. He said he's willing, uh, willing to deal some of his stud running backs in the process. And he said he's looking to get closer to competing in 2024 or 2025. He doesn't feel that he's good enough to contend right now. He knows his league. I'll trust him. Maybe there's some monsters in this yep. league or whatever. And he said, potential wide receiver upgrade. Should I trade, you know, Sky Moore or Gabe Davis and the 209 uh, or maybe the 203 for a wide receiver? Kind of thoughts on that type of trade package and who to target specifically um, with that type of trade pack. Let's tackle that question first. Who do you think yep. you can get with Sky Moore or Gabe Davis plus the 209 or 203 type of area? I well, have my I do, manifesto pulled up right now, so I can yeah. kind of give you an idea. Well, I do think uh, there's a pretty significant difference between putting sky and putting Gabe just based off relative value, I'd say on the market. So let's just say sky in the two Oh three. Uh, fuck man. If you can think, um, maybe a wide receiver, like can that get you like Brandon Ayuk? Yeah, maybe. I mean, Ayuk is just such a default like guy for us to target. Because <laughs> right? He's just so undervalued. I mean, Traylon Burks, Michael Pittman jr. Again, I'd, probably guys like also that. Great Even news. if you had to go down to like a DJ Moore or a Jahan Dotson, I'd hell, I'd even rather yeah. have Deontay Johnson than, than, uh, than that package, uh, the yeah. 203 in the in Sky more. So, um, yeah. yeah, Gabe Davis in the 203, you could probably get up to a little bit better of a guy. You could, for sure should be able to get up to like Michael Pittman Jr. range with that, I would say. Yep. Um, and then same goes for like a Debo Samuel type, Devontae Smith type, somebody like that. Um, so, yeah, those would be like the types of guys I'd go after. He said potential QB upgrade as well. Daniel Jones and one or both of the seconds. What can we get Heartbeat. with with Daniel Jones? Um, what, what, but like, let's see, what can you get with two twos and Daniel Jones? Like how how high can you get up? Can that get you a one or two? Can that get you Dak Prescott? Can you get you somewhere in there? Because if they can, I'm sending that offer and I'm not even thinking twice. Yeah, I, I, you, I don't. I think there's some league markets where you can get Deshaun Watson or Kyler Murray with that legitimately. Fuck, man. Any of those guys, you know, you, you put them on a board, you put them on a wheel. So say they're all available and you spin it and you hope that it gets you a top 12 to top four. I would, top I would do my darndest to get Kyler Murray on this team if you don't intend yes. to compete and sell off some running back talent. I would yeah. say if Daniel Jones and two twos get to Kyler Murray, I'm doing that in a heartbeat. Heartbeat. I'd actually be willing to add stuff on top of that. If you yes. had to throw in Sky Moore or something like that too, Fuck. just to get that done, I would take do Gabe it. Take Dave Davis, because, take yeah. fucking Jawan Johnson, Cole Kamau, whatever the fuck you want, to be honest. Yeah, exactly. He also says, uh, would you trade 2023 picks for 2024 first if the offer comes in? I mean, yes. easy question to answer, absolutely. If you're on the board at 109, somebody's going to give you a random 2024 first. I'm going to take that, that 109. Yes. And twice Heartbeat. on Sundays. Um, any other ideas for this roster? Should I move 2023 picks or use them? Again, if the offer presents itself, absolutely re-roll them into future capital because, like you said, you're not quite ready to compete yet. And then also, um, any other moves that I would make? I Again, I think you're relatively done a good job of assessing your team. You don't think you're ready to compete yet, and I think anybody's expendable probably outside of Patrick Mahomes. At um, that point. I was just going to say, if you're not ready to compete, those top two running backs should be able to fetch you a nice little uh, coup of draft picks. Uh, Brees Hall especially is going to be, uh, you know, probably a two, three, it's a super flex or probably like a two, three turn type of startup pick. You can get multiple firsts, especially in 2024 uh, for that player. Uh, you're just adding a lot more pieces to this team. Cause I do think like you have a good nucleus, but you don't have quite enough pieces. If you can get, you know, Brees Hall, maybe you, you get two 2024 firsts for it. One of them ends up, you know, in that 104 spot, one of them ends up at the 107. And you end up turning Brees Hall into, let's just say, Raheem Sanders and fucking like Xavier Worthy. You know or what I'm the saying? Quarterback three potentially. Maybe quarterback falls. Yeah. He has a great Absolutely. season. He goes 107 or something like that. Yeah. 
Like it, it gives you a lot more outs to be able to uh, not only win on value, but potentially if, if things break right, you can absolutely dominate value. Like hypothetically, if somebody gives you two twenty twenty four first, maybe Brees isn't quite ready to come back this year. Maybe, you know, he suffers an injury at the quarterback position. And now you're looking at, you have the 102 and the 106. You know what I mean? Like you have so many outs to be able to win that type of trade. And I do think in most leagues, especially from a guy who's willing to, you know, make that move to potentially get into that competing mix is willing to give you a package that sometimes you just can't deny. Yeah. And same goes for Stevenson. Same goes for Metcalf, Judy, anybody, Daniel Jones, anybody's having a Stafford who's an older quarterback, anybody who's in a spot like that. He also has a trade here. The league started in 2022. He sent away, um, Terry McLaurin in the 309 for Khalil Herbert in the 203. Uh, he said, not a great trade in my opinion. First year in a dynasty league. Yeah. yeah I would say you probably sold low on Terry McLaurin there. Um, Khalil Herbert, while he's, you know, fun and a good player. I mean, he's definitely worth a lot less than Terry McLaurin and the 203. Yeah. Well, it's a valuable pick. I think I'm probably need a late first at, at minimum to move Terry McLaurin. Yeah. Uh, I, I would agree with that as well. Uh, overall though, I mean, you, you have some moves to be able to make, uh, but I do think that, uh, making the right moves could, uh, potentially set you up. Uh, maybe obviously not by 2023, maybe even not by 2024, if you make those transitional moves. But, um, once you use those picks in 2024, by 2025, you should be fine. Yep, for sure. So let's move on to the last team of the video. We'll try and go as quick as we can here. Connor's team, two team, uh, two team, two quarterback, 10 team. Um, he has Kyler Murray, Trey Lance, Tua as his top quarterbacks there. Jonathan Taylor, Ken Walker, Tony Pollard, Damian Pierce. Very good team so far. Maybe we won't spend very much time on this team. Drake London, Rashad Bateman, DJ Moore, Gabe Davis, Christian Watson, George Pickens, Cortland Sutton, Wondell Robinson, some other dudes there. Dalton Schultz, uh, Greg Dolch, or no, sorry, uh, TJ Hawkinson and Chig Okonkro. And he also has 103, 104, 204, and some other picks there. Also has his own first in 2024, including an extra uh, second there as well. So his main question that he's wondering is because he has the 103, the 104, and already a great roster, what do we do to get B. John Robinson is basically his first question. Should I go after B. John Robinson with this team? I would say this is the type of team I would go after B. John Robinson with, depending on the cost. It's a super, or it's a two quarterback league, right? So that 103 should hold quite a bit of value because the person getting that pick is guaranteed one of Bryce Young or CJ Stroud or potentially Anthony Richardson if he balls out at the combine. Definitely, I would I would wait to make this move until after the combine because I think AR15 will make that those that 103, 104 area more valuable in terms of your rookie draft. But if it, if all it costs you to go up to get Bijan Robinson is 103, the 204, and a second next year or something like that. I'm absolutely willing to make that move. Hell, if it costs you 103 and 104 to get Bijan and maybe even a two on top of it, that would uh, that would be an interesting trade as well. I would rather leverage Walker plus a, uh, plus a smaller piece and go after Bijan because I don't think you need Jonathan Taylor, Kenneth Walker, Bijan Robinson, Tony Pollard, and Damian Pierce on the same team. Oh, so no, you absolutely you, do not. Yeah, so, there's definitely a lot of things you could, like even once you add Bijan to this team, you could also sell Pollard or Pierce or one of those other like middling yeah. backs that you have on your team. After, I would sell them like, to get Bijan. Oh, exactly. Yeah. If, if you can sell them to get a secure asset like Bijan, go ahead and do it. But if you just want to use the picks and that's all the person's interested in, then you could also do that. Because especially, yeah. you know, when people are looking to sell the 101, they're looking for rookie picks usually because they're not in a position to compete. Otherwise, they would just keep Bijan at that point in time. So if they might not want Kenneth Walker or Damian Pierce yeah. or anybody that's going to help them compete. So if they want a quarterback equity piece like CJ Stroud at 103 and, you know, uh, the 204 and a 2024 second, then you might be able to get that done with those uh, with um, those type of pieces. Personally, I mean, call call me crazy too. Uh, I probably just am not trading for Bijan Robinson at all at this point. The reason being is I think you have more question marks in terms of 2023 um, production at the quarterback position for a team that's willing to contend. Because I do think that if you package the 103 plus Trey Lance, maybe that gets you up to fucking Lamar Jackson, Justin Herbert, somebody like that. I would rather use my picks to leverage like that and maybe add a wide receiver because I do think you're more than set at running back. Your running backs are fine. Right. Uh, you have some risk at quarterbacks. Like I said, you make a, p- a potential move. Maybe Trey Lance or Tua Tungabailoa is the leverage piece plus one of those picks. You get an elite, elite quarterback to pair with Kyler, especially with him coming back from that injury. Maybe he's slow coming back. Uh, and the other thing is I do think you need a difference-making wide receiver because I do think you have some adequate depth. But uh, if that 104, you can leverage right now. Maybe it gets you... Um, you know, maybe you can get Adams plus a second on it or something like that, or Diggs plus a second or something like that. You can make that type of move. Um, I definitely need at least one more top 10 level wide receiver. Cause I think you have good depth. Like we said, Drake London's really good, but 
outside of Drake London, there's not much there that you can truly, truly bank on for difference making level production if you're willing to compete. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I really like the quarterback point for sure because sometimes like people will look at their team this time of year and they'll be like, oh, I have Justin Herbert and no other quarterbacks, or I have, you know, you know, Deshaun Watson, no other quarterbacks. And they might look at your team and be like, you have three quarterbacks plus quarterback type picks that you're going to be spending on in the rookie draft. And they might be like, Hey, I'll do a two for one. You give me essentially CJ Stroud at one Oh three and Trey Lance. And I'll give you Justin Herbert. Cause I need two quarterbacks. And I only have one on my team and yep. people will do that trade. Just sacrifice the stud factor. I need depth and they'll do it, especially yep. in a, a, a two quarterback league. Like you're in. Yep. No, agreed there. Uh, but overall you make those type of moves, uh, two Oh four, maybe at that point, if you want to add a running back, you can, but realistically like you're you're already four deep at running back like that's already as deep as i, I i'm wanting to be um personally too may, maybe you can move damien pierce for the 204 uh in the 204 maybe see if it gets you do you think in most markets i'll get you like the 107 106 108 in that yeah, range potentially. i think you could get up there yeah uh, i'd be looking to move that because i do think uh you can walk into next two season with Jonathan Taylor, Kenneth Walker, Pollard, our running back, and be pretty healthy there while still maintaining, uh, like like we kind of said with the quarterback, and maybe adding another wide receiver. Yeah, wide receiver definitely a, a, a somewhat of a need at this team as well. We could just quickly rapid fire these trades, and then we'll get out of here. We got yep. uh, first trade. He made these trades uh, preseason by the looks of it. Uh, he sent away Deontay Johnson and a third. He in exchange for Deontay Johnson got a 104 and Chase Edmonds. Definitely, Done. even at the time, too, yeah. Chase Edmonds might have had some value if you wanted to sell him off. And it looks like he potentially did as well. So great move there. Jamal Williams, uh, he traded away for a 2024 second and a fourth. Again, during the season, Jamal Williams was putting up that production. Probably he said he sold him in October. He might have even gotten more than that if you waited another like month or whatever. But given the information you tough. had about Jamal Williams to that point in his career, I probably would have made the same move in yeah. your position as well. He also traded away Terry McLaurin in the 203 for Drake London and Christian Watson. That is highway <laughs> robbery. I would, that is one of the, I would probably want one of those packages for either of those guys by themselves, let alone both of them. So yeah. um, definitely a great move. And then he sold, um, you know, low you got a second for Zeke. Quote unquote, got the 204 and a third for Zeke yeah. and a fourth. So yeah, great moves. <laughs> no reason why you you're not in this position is because of these sharp trades that you made oh. here. By the way, uh, the reason why I'm not sure if you, when we started on the team, you saw me laughing a little bit is because I was just looking at some of the trades. I'm like, bro, how'd you pull some of these off? I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, there's a reason you're in a good spot. You made some sharp yeah. trades. It looks like your leagues, uh, league mates are kind of sheep. So you can probably continue to take advantage of them. Again, sh explore some moves for quarterbacks, explore some moves for wide receivers. Like we talked about again, if you guys made it to the end of this video, leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel. If you are new around here. Go check out our new sponsors, Aura. Again, go rewatch that. I'm telling you, it's very, very important cybersecurity, and we want to thank them for sponsoring this video. So go check them out. Link down below in the description as well. So um, with that being said, peace out, and we'll talk to you soon. Why you need the money?